All right. We I'm are just running a speed live. test. Did I lose you? Pardon me? Are you back? Sorry. Yeah. Are we having connection problems? Can you hear me now? I can hear you. You're frozen on my end. I know. I saw that too. I'm just doing a speed test to check what's going on. Hold on. Let me do one more. So it's back up to 100 megabits a second. So I don't know. Something blipped. Yeah. 120 actually. So it's pretty high now. But You're good right now. So. Okay. All right. Well, it takes people a few seconds to get on here anyway. So anyway... Thank you guys for joining this live. Um, I'm going to hope that people start jumping on. And I want to introduce Danny Kerr, who is going to be one of the speakers at the Home Service Retreat in Victoria, Canada. Uh, not very far from where you are. I don't know exactly where you are, but you're in the Vancouver area, aren't you, Danny? Yeah, a place called Chilliwack. It's like a farming city. So we are an hour and a half from the ferry and then the ferry ride over to Victoria. So not too far. Nice. Nice. So why don't you introduce yourself? Um, I think the listeners would want to hear about Breakthrough Academy. Uh, and then we'll talk about the retreat and what you're going to cover there. Sure. That's good. So yeah. Um, so I'm Danny. I've, I've been in business, I guess, in the contracting space and painting actually since I was 18. So I started with a company called College Pro Painters many, many years ago and ran a franchise with them, became a GM and then went into corporate and uh, left after about eight years with this idea of like, how do you take everything we did with these franchisees and create a program around it where not necessarily selling a franchise, but you're offering all the same structure and support and Group, group collaboration and all the things that came out of working as a franchisor for so many years. So that was in 2015, we launched something called Breakthrough Academy. And uh, I guess that's almost nine years ago now. And um, yeah, since then, we've been working with contractors across North America. So we work with um, home services, landscaping, painting, renovations, mostly ser service and construction. It's kind of like our world. And um, you know, about I think 630 companies right now we actively are coaching uh, we've had about 2000 in our program over the last nine years and um really the focus is on kind of the ops ops side of business so i think a lot of people focus on sales and marketing a lot of what we do is more on the operational side so looking at how do you look at your numbers so your your, your budget your financials your sales plan your production plan all these numbers create proper kpis use that to drive the organization forward so they create an org structure out of that and build job descriptions appropriately, recruiting processes appropriately, standard auction procedures, all the things that are ops driven. And I find most of the customers we work with, their growth isn't necessarily the issue. It's like stable growth that's profitable, that takes them out of the day to day, that gives them a path to follow that's like worth it versus growing and having the wheels fall off as you do, you know, all the things that come with running a business. So yeah, that's in a nutshell what we do and we've been busy doing it for a lot of years. And we met via Megan Likes. And I remember Megan when she signed up for Breakthrough Academy. Um, uh, she probably gave you guys a pretty hard time when she signed up. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Megan does all the time. She wanted to be like, get down to the nitty. He's just like, why can't we start? And so we have, a, we have an interview process. We put everybody through. It's, again, similar to like when I brought in franchisees, I want the relationship to go well so both expectations wise the fit all that stuff so we have a very similar process to bringing a customer into breakthrough academy and i think she was in her third meeting and she was meeting with me and she's like can we just join like what is the what else do you need to know <laughs> all the process megan chill out and yeah, anyway, yeah. she ended up being a phenomenal client and um with jeff obviously who's they're running their, their window painting business but um yeah there was some due diligence she was impatient <laughs> yes. well but I do know one of the things that she really talks about is how she feels like the program is different is like she's a numbers girl and she loves all the data that mm -hmm. they're required to submit and that um, their coach goes through the data with them and 
And then, of course, I see you guys doing all sorts of cool trips, which I'm all about that, it's combining learning with an experience. Yeah. And you're very much about that. Um, what's your average, like the average revenue that a person does that's in Breakthrough Academy? So the, the actual number is about three and a half million. Um, so there are larger businesses on average. Um, in more like the services side, I would say it's a little smaller. It's probably like a million and a half, million, million and a half. And the main reason is the amount of complexity that it takes to run that type of business with a smaller average job size is similar to a larger, say, construction business, right? So if you have a $5 million construction business, the people, the processes, the running around of all the different mechanics that happen, it's about the same complexity as like a million and a half, say, cleaning or landscaping or, you know, whatever, window washing company, because there's just more overhead, there's more people, there's more trucks running around, smaller jobs, more things going on within a given day. So it does vary based on industry. The average overall is about three and a half million. So yeah. yeah. And I think that's one thing that, um, like I said, I know there are people who are going to listen to this that are looking for most of the programs out there. Um, in the cleaning world where I come from, most of the programs out, out there, the top people are doing, you know, one to two, and those are the top. Yeah. And so the people who are doing at least that much and more, they don't feel like they have a space. Right. They, they don't feel like they have the space. And they think what I find interesting is they think they need to find a space within the cleaning world. I, I don't. Um, and so speak about that. Like sure. what, what is the motive behind bringing people from all different industries and then having them share? Cause it sounds like it's kind of in groups too. Yep. Yeah. We still, we, we do have groups. I find that as business grows, the product becomes just that a product, but the business driving that product becomes more and more similar on the back end, right? Like you might have a different chart of accounts slightly than somebody else, but you're still going to have variable expenses. You're still going to have overhead costs. You might have a slightly different gross profit margin target, but you're still going to have gross profit margin on every job that you're going to do job, job, job costing on. Um, right. You know, and, and there's and there's shifts, right? Like if I work with like a cleaning company or a, a maintenance service business, we might not care as much about every single individual job's gross profit, but we might want to care about per, per crew and how did that crew perform for the week and the com combination of their jobs for that week. How did they, how was their gross profit for that week? And then you could have, you know, like junk removal, we look at per truck and see how each truck is performing. So the same concepts apply, but you just would change the language slightly. Um, and yeah, I mean, generally there's this old adage, right? Like what got you here will no longer get you there. And what I find a lot of businesses that do this type of work focus on is that startup place where it's like, how do we get you from, you know, running it just you and one person to getting to a place where you have a bit of a team and you have, you know, five, six hundred thousand dollars in revenue. But what happens after that is it's less about just driving sales and marketing and baseline hiring. It's strategic planning, looking at the bigger picture. You have a lot of moving parts. It's like, how do you organize all this to be pointing in one direction and um yeah, yeah we, we work a lot on like people profit and process over just like sales and marketing i guess you'd say like I, and i don't know everyone else's program i just i know that our world is like expert level like process to be able to organize all the things that happen expert level recruit train and operate model to be able to drive good human beings to go do all this work and then really understanding, like you said, the metrics and the numbers. So profit to be able to make sure that you're optimal in everything you're doing, because the game is won and lost in percentages, right? If you look at a million dollar business, 1% on a million is $10,000 of potential net profit, potential money towards a salary, or just completely vaporized and in inefficiency that wasn't paid attention to. And 1% is not much. It's really easy to have a bit of extra yeah. drive time or to be quoting slightly different by a dollar per hour or all these things and these one percents add up yeah and that's probably why megan really sings praises just because she's definitely paying attention to the one percent whereas a lot of people just like you say just aren't 
and they don't know better. So uh, let um, I will say real quickly, I met Jason Hoke, Jonathan mm -hmm. Bray through Megan through BTA and uh, I love those guys and what they're doing with issue ID is pretty cool. And um, anyway, I'm trying to talk them into joining us in Victoria. So we'll see. We'll cool. See. Maybe we get to see them. Um, so talk a little bit about the retreat and well, I know the logistics, you probably don't, but talk about what your session is about and what you hope people take away from that. Sure. So it's going to be on what we call like the contractor growth method. And so for us, this is kind of like the thing that we install into every business that we work with. And it involves six different parts of which I think the parts are important, but I think it's actually seeing how they all connect to be one machine. That's ultimately the most important thing out of this talk that people usually get. So, you know, I'll go through, we'll go through financials and we'll talk about why QuickBooks and your CRM need to be hooked up to something. And that thing is some sort of a dashboard where we can see not just where you're at, but what the goal is versus where you're at. So where the variance lies. So it's one thing to be able to like, and it is actually very much one thing to be able to actually know where you're at financially and where you're at sales wise. But once you get that figured out, is that good? Is that bad? By how much? And most importantly, like why? Right. So that you can actually take action based on the numbers, because if your sales ratio is 5% lower than goal, let's go investigate why. If your gross profit margins are, you know, 5% higher and with certain crews than other crews, let's go and investigate why. But if you don't have a goal against any of this, how do you know what's higher and lower? How do you know what's good and bad? Right. Mm -hmm. And so we start there and then we start to say, okay, well, this is great and all for, you know, the owner to be able to have some control mechanisms, but what's 10 times more powerful is how do you bring those numbers down into your staff's consciousness so that they think and want it to drive these numbers. So you can go from being their boss to more being their coach. It's like, you are in charge of this much in revenue produced, this much in gross margin. You're in charge of this much booked, you know, this many leads generated. And everybody's job description revolves around these KPIs or what we call deliverables. And how do you bake those into their job, right? Through employment agreements, things like that. And then we start to get into, well, it's great to know now what their employment agreement should be based on deliverables, but how do you find these people? So we start to talk about recruiting tactics and how do you reverse engineer the entire recruiting process around an ideal candidate profile, just like you do in marketing, an ideal customer profile, what's the ideal candidate profile and build a recruiting funnel that leads people in and ultimately vets and screens people with very specific interview questions that look for the traits required to hit those types of KPIs or those types of numbers. All right. And then we go deeper and we go, okay, now like, how do you build a training program around this person's employment agreement where everything you're committing them to, to go do in their job, you have an how, a how to or a training process around it. So now you can hold a standard that's outside of just your, your what's in your head, right? Um, so we get into a few other things. And then the last thing we kind of walk over is, or go over is how do you take all of these concepts and bake them into like a one page strategic plan? So the entire business knows where it's going, knows what initiatives are most important to work on, knows what numbers are most important to hit. And the owner ultimately has a place to focus because I think a lot of us struggle with, I call it entrepreneur ADD. It stands for like another darn distraction where it's like, there's so much we could go do, but what is truly important is written in that strategic plan. And what's written in that plan is building something of intentionality with the end in mind of all the components I just mentioned. So, yeah. Yeah. Nice. Anyway, you don't have to show up anymore. There's the, there's the, <laughs> there's the time. Yeah. We're not saying that. Uh, we'll go deep. Uh, we're gonna spend, I think, we have an hour, so we'll go. Yeah. We'll spend an hour on those concepts. So, yeah. an hour, and I've been working with um, some people from BTA on your behalf. On you guys are sponsoring a happy hour, and uh, so it, you probably don't even know, but you speak. I think it's a Wednesday and then Wednesday afternoon, you guys are sponsoring a happy hour. Did you even know that? Nope. <laughs> no, <laughs> I'll be there though. Sounds great. That's so funny. Well, they know, they know what you want. They know how to take care of you, but uh, they purposely were like, we want to do it so that after the session, you know, how that is 
people are going to think of a gazillion questions that they didn't think of. So your happy hour might not be as happy because you'll be answering a lot of questions, but, uh, but no, uh, it, and really that's what this retreat is about. I mean, there's a ton of built in networking time and I feel like it's, well, I can't say that. I was going to say, I feel like it's like one of your BTA events, but I can't say that because I don't know, but we have about five and a half hours of workshop and a little bit of lecture sessions. And then everything else is a lot of group activities, cool. some free time, but just a lot of together time. And um, a lot of it is in fun atmospheres. Yeah. Um, not that learning is not fun, but. Yeah, it's good. And what you're speaking to is like, and I see it all the time is the sessions are great, but the reality is someone's only really going to probably take away 10% of what was actually taught or said. And I think a lot of the learning and the actual actions that come out of this come in the networking afterwards where you meet certain people, you get deeper to certain conversations, you have someone's contact info to follow up with down the road when you need them. And that's when the rubber really hits the road. And like, I always call it like 3 a.m. time. Like a lot of really good business gets done at 3 a.m. But like yeah. it's not scheduled at all. It's just that's that's the stuff. So yeah. yeah. Well, and uh, and I think it's funny because I feel that way absolutely. Like for me, I don't, I mean yeah, sure. I care about the sessions that are there, but I guess I really care about the people that it's drawing and yep. the the people that I'll be with. I remember the first time that I went to a non cleaning business conference and I was surrounded with probably 90% of the attendees were in lawn care. And I remember, I remember being blown away just because I'd listened to conversations and they were so different than the conversations that like when I would go to ISSA or a, a cleaning conference because we have the same problems, but they were looking at it in a different way. Yeah. Or I feel like in the cleaning industry, we're really pretty good at quality and um, company culture as compared to like some of the lawn care guys I would listen to. And I'm sure it happens in the cleaning industry too, but uh, I would hear just uh, kind of the, well, I don't know why I have to do that. It's, you know, I'm paying them and blah, blah, blah. You know, so it would, but it was really interesting because they were so good at like routing Mm -hmm. And we're up, you know, and uh, so when people say I'm looking for another cleaning conference, I'm like, why? Why look for <laughs> look for a conference that has, draws people with big minds, you know, and uh, uh, that you can network with? Because I do agree, it's the networking. Yeah, and you know what I've I've identified just because we work with people from you know custom home construction, you know painting, landscaping, renovations, moving, cleaning, all these industries. What I do find, and I will say there is a bit of a category that I've figured out between each of these is you've kind of got like small average job size, medium average job size, and large average job size. Mm -hmm. And those categories alone really start to like help us form even our groups because I, I see your sales cycle, your production cycle, the way you organize the organization, the way you do quotes, the way you offer your gross profit margins, everything actually has a lot more to do with your average job size than it does with the specifics of like cleaning versus lawn care. Yeah. Versus. But I will say a construction, like a, a custom home construction business is it operates quite differently than like a cleaning business, yeah. but a window cleaning, gutter cleaning, lawn care, snow removal business operates, they all operate quite similar as like a cleaning business right. by nature yeah. of just the way that they do work, the way they book work, the way they process through it all. So, uh -huh. yeah. and that makes perfect sense. So anyway, but well, I'm going to be very respectful of your time. And uh, so I did put up the link of 
anybody that's interested in uh, BTA, Great Career Academy, cool. you can go there and then I'll put up the link to the conference where well, it's a retreat. We're calling it a retreat because it's got so much downtime and activities. Cool. Um, and then you can come and hear Danny in person and pick his brain during happy hour too uh, that he didn't even know they were sponsoring. But uh, anyway, let's see. We're less than 60 days, I think. So I, it won't be long and I'll see you again. And well, I shouldn't say this out loud and jinx myself, but it's non-COVID time this time when we see each other. <laughs> we should be able to move freely. All right. Well, thank you so much. And uh, I'll see you in a couple of months. Awesome, Martha. Okay, thanks. Bye.